I'm just back from a trip I took with a bunch of high school kids. So I felt a little like John Millay. John Millay in Europe. Uh, I was playing the role of Chevy Chase, I think. Oh, oh, that's, uh, I, I don't think that's, no, I, I don't approve of that, Jim. You be Jim. <laughs> you be Jim Suhan in Europe. Don't be me. Don't be Chevy Chase. I'm glad you, I'm glad you had a great trip. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, good to talk to you too. <laughs> I did have a great trip. Uh, it was a reminder of just how, how great high school kids are, how great band kids are. We got to go to Munich and Salzburg and Innsbruck with my wife's high school band. Uh, it was it was just great stuff. Uh, Irondale High School. The kids were great. It's they're an excellent music program. So it was just fun to be around that kind of people. You're around those kinds of people all the time. This is Preps Today with John Millay. He's John Millay from MSHSL.org. You can find his written work at mshsl.org under John's journal. And of course, you get to listen to him here. Uh, this is part of talknorth.com. We have a lot of sports shows. We have the best sports lineup in town. We have really good outdoor content. We have some variety shows. Check it all out at talknorth.com. If you like this show or any show at the network, please subscribe to your favorite podcast app. It's free. It's the easiest way to listen. And thanks to our sponsor, Pizza Barn in Princeton, and uh, our producers, Brandon Morton and Davide Rosseo. I will, I'm going to let you know about a trip in conjunction with the John Krasinski show uh, on this network later in the show that I highly recommend. But let's get to the point of the show. Let's talk about state tournaments today. Yeah, Jim, we are uh, in the final week of the uh, 2024 winter state tournaments. The winter sports season is is wrapping up with boys basketball this week. Uh, we'll have games at Target Center and Williams Arena as we normally do. Uh it's a little it's a little different this year the schedule. Normally girls basketball has semifinals and championship games at Williams Arena. The boys home for those games is usually Target Center. They are going to be at uh, Williams Arena this week. We'll have quarterfinals at both sites and then everything goes to Target Center uh for semifinals and finals. And this has to do with a lot of factors. I think mostly the fact that the Target Center hosted the Big 10 women's and men's tournaments that put the Timberwolves on the road. They need to get some home games in. So we are going to have boys state quarterfinals Wednesday and Thursday at target center. And then the Timberwolves have a home game Friday. And then if you're a bad bunny fan, there's a bad bunny concert at target center Saturday. So that's why we're having uh, the boys semis and finals at Williams arena We'll talk more about the tournament next week, but one of the great storylines going in, and there's a lot, um, but what I really like is the Farmington boys basketball team. They've made it to state for the first time since 1937. That is quite a, quite a, quite a gap. And boy, you know, we know what Farmington, Minnesota is like now. I'd love to go back in time to, you know, pre World War II. I'm sure it was it was farms and a little main street. I'm sure, but they made it to state in 1937. They're they're back. Another change this year is the championship games schedule. On Saturday, all four championship games will be at Williams Arena with an afternoon session and an evening session. Normally, they go in order: 1 a and 2 a in the afternoon, 3 a and 4 a at night. Different this year: 1 a will be at noon Saturday followed at around 2 o'clock by the 3A game. So then the evening session, which starts at 6, will be 2A and then 4A. This is crowd control. That's why this is done even at Target Center, which is a lot bigger and easier to navigate than Williams Arena. On those Saturday night championship games, getting the 3A fans out and the 4A fans in, it's always a problem. It's a worse problem at Williams Arena. That's why the 3A and 4A games are split up. So we're going to have a great week. Uh, we're talking here on Tuesday. I'll be at the games all four days starting Wednesday. Let's go back one week to the girls' state basketball tournament, which was fabulous this year. Uh, the state champs were uh, from 4A on down, Minnetonka, Benilde St. Margaret's Providence Academy, and Goodhue. Benilde won its second straight. Providence has now won three in a row. And, you know, those are private schools. And anytime private schools do well, some people come out of the woodwork and they're mad at private schools. And the first thing they scream or type into their social media site is private schools should have to compete in their own class entirely separate. I've heard that for 35 years. 
what they're not thinking about are all the, the private schools they've never heard of that never go to state. You know, there, there's, there's, that's not an answer to this. Now, in some states, uh, there's a point system in which very successful programs, public, private, no matter the sport, they can be forced to move up in class if, if they're, if they're, if they're good enough, if they're great enough over, you know, two or more years. There's different ways to do it. You'd have a point system. If you go to a section final, you get, you know, for example, five points. If you go to the state semifinals, you get 10 points. If you win state, you get 20. Anyway, they're, they're, they use point systems. That's been discussed here in Minnesota. It has gained no traction. Um, and it wouldn't Im- impact any teams that are already in the largest class. So that's just to touch a couple of, a couple of third rails, um, that have come up on, on the heels of the girls tournament. But I'll tell you what, Jim, this girls tournament, this was like old timers week for me. I reconnected with three people I wrote about when they were superstars in high school, wrote about a couple of them. Uh, the first one was Carly Wagner, Miss Basketball from 10 years ago. She was a basketball star for the Gophers. She's now a nurse at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester and a wow. volunteer, a volunteer girls basketball coach with Stewartville, which went to state. I caught up with Carly at the tournament, wrote about her. I also caught up with Kelly Roislin Curry, who went to state with Faust and, and, and won several state titles 20 years ago. Also had a great career with the Gophers. Uh, the Faustin girls made it back to state this year and Kelly spoke to the team before the tournament. Uh, you can read about, you, you can read about both of those, uh, people on John's journal. And I didn't have a chance to write about Spencer Tollickson, but I, I had a nice chat with Spencer over at Williams Arena. He was a state champ at Chaska, uh, 20 years ago. He told me his team had a 20 year reunion recently. And he, you know, he works as a TV analyst and you're going to see him this week alongside Dave Lee during the boys tournament. He was also doing that at the girls tournament, as does our friend Leah Beals. And, and it's just so much fun to catch up with everybody. Um, these, these nice people I've known forever. They're nice to keep, uh, keep the old sports writer, uh, you know, give me a smile and, and, uh, spend some time with me. And a coach I wrote about, I wrote about a couple of coaches. One is Jim Lean. He's the co-coach of the girls basketball team at Walker Hackensack Akeley. That guy has, he's 77 years old. He's been coaching basketball for 46 years. He finally made it to state this year. And I wrote about that on John's journal, really a, a cool deal. Um, and uh, another note, I realized on March 16th over the weekend that March 15th was my 14th anniversary with the Minnesota State High School League. Oh, wow. Also the date of uh, a famous a famous guy's birthday, Sid Hartman, was born on March 15th. That's how I try to remember it. But, yeah, it's been 14 years and, uh, you know, a couple of decades before that at the Star Tribune. So, uh, you know, one more year, I, my retirement plans are basically one more year. I'll, I'll start fading away in some, in some manner. Nothing's definite yet, but, uh, sometime in 2025. And here's how long I've been around you. I, I, I looked at the 32 girls basketball teams that went to state this year and realized I have visited in person 30 of those schools. On the boys' side, my number is a little smaller. Of the 32 boys' basketball schools at State, I've only been to 28 of those. So I've got a little work to do in the next year or so, try to, try to you know, put a few more notches in the holster and go to some of these places. But, yeah, it's just it's, it's a great time of year. It's, uh, it's tiring, I'll tell you that. I get home from these tournaments. And, uh, it'll be fun this week. It's the last one. We're all fired up, and, and it's the boys' basketball tournament is always great. So, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to have more fun than I did with the girls' tournament. Just seeing all those people I've known for so long, and and as you know, this this stuff's all about the relationships and the people you get to spend time with, and, and it's just just been fantastic. Well, I I regret that you're headed toward retirement. I'm also very happy for you that you're headed for a retirement. And I would say that uh, most people in this business, uh, no matter how good you think you might be, most of us are pretty replaceable. I don't know. Oh, that, oh, I don't, I don't know that you're replaceable. I don't know that oh. anybody else could do what you've done uh, or would be willing to do what you you do because it, it's a man. It's besides, needing having the knack for writing and telling stories and connecting with people and building relationships you just work like crazy 
Well, that's that's part of the beauty of it. I don't mind doing that. And uh, yeah, you, you know, I'm not irre- nobody's irreplaceable. You know, somebody. I don't even know if, if they will replace if they'll fill this job at the high school. Age. Those discussions are a long ways from even starting. And I've got some ideas on some things they could do. Maybe shape this a little differently if they'd like to. But but uh, you know, I, I nobody can do anything forever. And I'm, I'm I've got you know, as you know I've got grandkids and my wife's retired and. And I may not just go cold turkey. Maybe I'll still do some work for the high school league on a part-time basis, but we'll see. You know, a lot of a lot of time to go yet. Probably the summer of 2025. That's probably my my best target for actually retiring from full-time work with the high school league. But I, my wife's very doubtful if I can just go cold turkey because she knows how much this this all means to me, and she might be right. We'll see what happens. Yes, plenty of time to, to consider uh, that, but congratulations in advance on that. Oh, we're going to talk about Joe Maurer. We're going to talk about the League of Champions, the busiest coach in Minnesota. We're going to thank a ref and thank a meat salesman. Why not? Uh, hey. We'll also give you John's <laughs> most valuable teammate of the week. First, we do want to hear about Jody Stay and Pizza Barn in Princeton. Yeah, great things going on up there. The the winter is winding down, and uh, it's March. We're in the middle of March. Pizza Barn has brought back the classic Reuben pizza as, as the pizza of the month. They start with their house-made crust, Thousand Island dressing, tender corned beef that spends hours in the pizza oven, sauerkraut, Swiss and mozzarella, black pepper. They've got it for dine-in, take-and-bake, delivery all month long, and the March appetizer of the month is waffle fries, with seasoned sour cream. I really like the sound of that. And as we've mentioned previously here, uh, big food truck news as, as we get as we get into the food truck season. Uh, September 6th, that's going to get here before we know it. September 6th in Somerset, Wisconsin at the Outlaw Music Festival. You're going to be able to get some of that, some of those goodies from the Pizza Barn food trucks. And if, uh, if some famous customers walk up to the food trucks, I recommend Jody and her crew Give these things away for free to people like Willie Nelson and John Mellencamp and Bob Dylan. I, I de- I'm going to de- declare right now they don't have to pay if they walk up to the Pizza Barn food truck in Somerset, Wisconsin on September 6th. That's that's my declaration. So way to go. Thanks to everybody at the Pizza Barn, Jody Stay and her whole crew for everything they do and for being part of our podcast for years and years. Uh, by the way, if any of those great artists want to eat at Pizza Barn in Princeton, put it on me. Oh, even better. Okay, I, I, heard I will. I will pay if any of those people <laughs> want to eat Pizza Barn in Princeton. Yeah. I love them all, and I love Jody Stay. I would yeah. like to make that happen. So, so you know, in there case they're they're dealing with a lot of budgetary issues on this tour, and they need a <laughs> yeah. little help. Oh. I'm yeah. here for them. That's a big. That's a big step. I was not willing to go there. I'm going. Were, okay, Jim Suhan is paying for the pizza for the for the celebrities at that. Uh, Great event. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, hey, Rook, Rook, one of our best shows on this network, one of those popular shows is the John Krasinski show. Great reporter who covers the Timberwolves, talks about the NBA. The show's been a big success. Been so successful. We teamed up with Define Destinations, definedestinations.com. John is going to take a group of Timberwolves fans to uh, Spain this summer, and it's going to be fantastic. Michael Russo has done this with wild fans before. It's been a big hit. Uh, I think KWB and some other local celebrities have done it. They bring, you know, a nice size group of people. You see great sights. You hang out. You're not, all, you're not locked into spending all your time together, but you do get to go see some things together. You get to talk about sports, all that. Go to defineddestinations.com and check out the Timberwolves trip with John Krasinski. I highly recommend it. And thank you. Now let's get on to more honors for Joe up Mauer because it's been 18 or 19 minutes since he's won one. Because, yeah, speaking of, of well traveled, yes. Joe's going to have a busy summer as we already knew. He's going to be inducted into the Minnesota State High School League Hall of Fame. That's on April 14th. We already knew he's going into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown on July 21st. Here's another Hall of Fame. It was announced last week. We, we, at the high school league, we knew this was coming. We waited for the National Federation to make this announcement. July 1st in Boston, Joe Maurer, he's the headliner on the 2024 class for the National High School Hall of Fame. So I'll be there in Boston for that. It's 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 like a five day. It's the summer conference of the National Federation of State High School Associations. I generally attend that. It's in a different city each year, 
The last time it was in Boston, the great Bob McDonald was inducted into this Hall of Fame, and we've got a really, really, really quite a list of Minnesotans who are in the National High School Hall of Fame. Joe will be in there July 1st. And uh, yeah, what a summer for the for the kid from St. Paul. Uh, great stuff, and and good for Joe. I mean, he was yeah. really one of the most amazing high school athletes in the history oh. of our country. Uh, yeah, it's a no brainer to put yeah. him in this thing. Yeah, and my own, I knew he. I know they wanted him in. My only reservation was: is he going to have time right. to spend a couple? I mean, he only has to be there a couple days, but still. And I'm really glad that he worked it out, and, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be neat. No doubt. All right, on to the League of Champions. This is pretty cool. The Hiawatha Valley League is in southeast Minnesota. They are having quite a basketball postseason. It's there's no I don't think there's another conference like it in the state. They have schools that are in three different classes, one A, two A, three A. In girls basketball, they had three teams go to state, all in different classes. Goodhue, Rochester, Lourdes, and Stuartville. And son of a gun, it's the same thing in boys' state basketball. Goodhue, Lake City, Stewartville, they've all made it to state. It's a really cool little conference down there with quite a mix of teams. And, and to send three of them in three different classes to state for both of these tournaments, that's really quite an accomplishment. No doubt about it. All right, on to this one. I'm interested in this one. The yes. busiest coach in Minnesota. Okay, five years ago during the basketball season, I drove up to Mountain Iron Buell because their their boys, their girls basketball coach had just also become the boys basketball coach. So Jeff Buffetta is the guy's name. I've known Jeff over the years. The girls, uh, they were the state champs in 1A basketball a year ago. They finished second to good here this year. For five years, this head coach has been the head coach of the girls team and the boys team. I mean, that is a logistical challenge. Um, So, and and they work it out. He's got great assistance. And Jeff basically doesn't miss games. He might miss a practice because it's at the other team's game. But last weekend, it was like, uh, this was as wild as it could get. Last Friday, he coached the Mountain Iron Buell girls in an afternoon, a 2 o'clock state semifinal at Williams Arena. The game ended about about 3.45. And then he jumped in a car for a three-hour drive to Hibbing where the boys team from Mountain Iron Buell met Cherry in a section championship game. They moved that game back half an hour to 7.30. Jeff got there in time. Neither team won that day. And then after the boys game in Hibbing, he drove back down to the Twin Cities and was at Williams Arena for the championship game on at noon on Saturday. Uh, it's unbelievable. They're just the dedication – to the kids on both teams, I don't think I don't think either of those teams is being shortchanged one bit with how much time Jeff puts into this. Um, I've written about that. I should go back and find that story from five years ago. It was really, really something. Uh, he's a great coach, just so dedicated to the kids on his teams. He gets emotional talking about it, but that was that was quite the thing. I thought I'd seen a lot. I'd never seen that before. Not you know. He, just a guy coaching two basketball teams at the same time, but then coaching them on the same day in a state semifinal and a section championship game, three hours apart. That's, that's really something. That's amazing stuff. All right. On to one of our favorite recurring uh, yes. items. Thank a ref. Thank a ref. And as we do so, we're going to thank a meat salesman. Why not? Uh, here we go. Uh, I am very lucky. I have many friends who are high school officials, and we had a I had a meat theme reunion, meat themed reunion with one of those officials at the girls' state basketball tournament. Tim Bass is a guy who lives in Springfield, Minnesota. He's he's one of the state's best football and basketball officials. He worked a game at the girls' state basketball tournament. Uh, in his day job, he works in the meat and snack industry for a company called Monogram Meat Snacks, which is in the tiny town of Chandler, Minnesota. Hmm. And this is at least the second time he's brought snacks to me at the state tournament. So uh, one of the days at Williams Arena, he opened his bag, which would normally contain his officiating gear, and he pulled out three boxes of kind of snack-sized meat and cheeses, the kind, the prepackaged kinds, You'd see in a convenience store or a grocery store. So he parks these three boxes of snacks 
on my seat at Williams Arena courtside. So I, I just I do what I've done before. Tim has done this in the past. I just start going down the courtside seats to media people. I'm not even asking. I'm flipping everybody. Here's a meat and cheese pack. Here's some jerky. Here's some sausage. Then I went into the student sections and said, here you go. Everybody's getting some. Um, here's my here's my fatal flaw, Jim. I didn't save any meat or cheese for myself. What's wrong what? with me? Who who am I? What was I? I got so excited. You were out about- of the sports writing fraternity. <laughs> I'm done. It was there for the taking. I could have filled myself. I didn't. I realized uh, when it was too late. I hadn't saved any for me, but that's okay. Tim will be around again. This this started years ago. I was planning to go to a basketball game somewhere in in Southwest Minnesota. I tweeted that I was planning to go. I had not met Tim, and then at the game beforehand, he pulls me aside, or maybe it was after. I got something for you, and he hands me like a gift bag of all these meat and cheese snacks. Thus, a tradition was born. So he comes to he comes to state tournaments bearing gifts, and I'm so dumb I didn't leave any for me. So you know that's uh, that's that's no problem. That's okay. Everybody everybody enjoyed the snacks. I'm handing out meat, and somebody said, "Do you know a potato guy? We could have meat and potatoes here at Williams." I don't know. I know a lot of people in Moorhead. I don't know a potato guy. So uh, I want to shout out a couple other officials here. Uh, my buddy Paul McDonald. From Ely, last fall, wrapped up a 35-year career as a high school football official. And last week, his uh, his lengthy career as a high school basketball official came to an end, too. As I like to say about, about great people, they're the best of the best. Paul McDonald is right there. Congrats to him. And a special congrats to another guy I know, Josh Lampa. He's the athletic director at Rock Ridge. And the, the Wolverines played in the girls' state basketball tournament for the first time. Josh is a real rarity. I don't know anybody who who has done what he's done in state tournaments. When he was in high school at Big Fork in the 90s, he played in the state basketball tournament. He coached in the boys' state basketball tournament in 2004 at Nashwalk Kewatin. He has officiated at state tournaments, and he's now, now an athletic director at state tournaments. He's also a football and volleyball official. Heck of a guy. Everybody knows the Lampas from up north. So hats off to Josh for just continuing to do great things. Excellent stuff. And by the way, if you sell meat snacks or potatoes or anything else and you want to sponsor Preps Today with John Millay, you can reach our sales executive, Karen Cleary, K-C-L-E-A-R-Y at talknorth.com. You can reach a statewide audience that John has built up. Uh, We'd love to have you. Uh, Now let's conclude yeah. today's show with most valuable teammates. Yeah, we, we could indeed sell some meat snacks. I think we could sell awesome some meat Jim. snacks. I think, genius I, idea. Fact, I think, John, you might buy enough of the meat snacks yourself oh. to justify the sponsorship. Oh. Well, if I didn't get them for free. Well, we, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. Uh, yeah, let's go to this week's most valuable teammate, this super popular uh, weekly award at the high school league, Bria Parra. She's a senior from Frazee. She participates in volleyball, dance, and softball. Bria represents her school with class and respect, setting the tone every day for other students when not competing. She can be found at all home events, taking photos of her peers to be displayed at school. She's an essential part of the yearbook staff, does her best to spotlight her peers whenever possible. She's one of the best teammates anyone could ask for. Congratulations to Bria Paras of Frazee for being a most valuable teammate. Great stuff as always, John. Uh, great to talk to you again. We'll talk to you again next you week. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about the, uh, in particular, the girls state basketball tournament, which has become such a, such a great event. Awesome. It's awesome. Yep. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, John.